Whoa, that'll wake you up. Welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, I solved my garage lighting issues. I wanna share with you the lights that I bought, how I installed them, and then my final thoughts and what I think of them. So stick around. All right, so the lights that I chose to go with are a Barina T8 LED light uh, that I bought on Amazon. They're 5,000 Kelvin, so they're on the warm daylight spectrum, but still a, a pretty bright white. Uh, they say that they give off 5,000 lumens, which I think it's closer to probably 4,800, uh, but still very bright, lots of light. They're sold in four foot or eight foot lengths. If you get the four foot lengths, you can hook up to six of them together. Or if you get the eight foot lengths, I believe you can hook up to four of them together. Uh, they're super lightweight. The lights are in a V-shaped pattern so that they project lights in two different directions. Uh, and there's a ton of different ways that you can connect these things together. You can directly plug them right into the wall. Um, they have wire connectors that you can link them together up to about two feet apart. And then you can also hardwire them into the wall as well. And they give you plenty of the connectors so that you can do any combination of what you want. The first step for me is always to plan things out. Uh, I love 3D modeling, so I yet again, I went back to my 3D model that I did earlier of my garage, and I put in the lights where I thought they were going to go. Three rows right down the center. All right, for the first step of installation, I went kind of old school. I marked out where I wanted my lights to be, put in a nail on either side of my garage, and then ran a string in between so that I had that straight line since I don't have a laser. Uh, then I lined the clips up on the center of that line and you can see the clips here they're a really small clip and then they give you a smaller screw and that screw doesn't even go all the way through the drywall so you don't need to worry about lining these up with a joist or a truss above it now that the clips are on the ceiling now we just slide the lights right into them and then i used the small jumper so that i could butt all the lights right up to each other All right, so the next step for me was to drill a hole in the ceiling so that I could hardwire these in. Um, the only problem that I ran into was the connector that they gave us to hardwire them in was way too short. So I needed to come up with something different. And what I did was I used their plug-in method and I just trimmed it down to size to make a slightly longer cable. Here's what the wiring looks like in the attic. Uh, you can see that I wired in two blue boxes for the ones that you can see just to put my connections in and then I wired those back to the original light that goes down to my switch. This is the light that I had in my garage that I just removed. If you want to know, if you want to know more about these, I'll put a link down in the description. After double checking to make sure that I had the power turned off, I pulled the wires through from the attic that I wired into the boxes earlier. Then I cut and stripped all the wires. Then I wire nutted all the connections together, white to white, black to black, and then ground to ground.
now I kind of gently finessed these wires back into the box, uh, making sure that all the connections were kind of far apart from each other just to make sure we're not going to have anything touching. And then now is probably a good time to test the lights to see if they work. Then the last step. All right guys, so I just want to give you a better install. I really hope this is coming through on camera, um, how actually, how bright these are. Um, I did install 15 of them, which I think might be a little bit excessive. Uh, each one's around 4,800 to 5,000 lumens, so that's about 72,000 to 75,000 lumens um, in this small space. And this is a 22 by 22 garage. Um, if you ask my wife, it's way too much light. If you ask me, it, it's just enough. Well, it's maybe a little bit excessive, but it, uh, it's plenty and it's definitely easier to see out here. So I don't think there, it's too many, but I definitely think you could get away with less. Um, if you wanted to go in the 10 range, I think that would definitely be acceptable. Another awesome thing that I want to say is how easy they were to install. Um, I, hired, I hardwired mine in, which really wasn't that bad. Um, if I could do this again, I think I would uh, hardwire them in in two different sets. So maybe I would have the middle set going to one switch and then the outside set going to a second switch. Uh, that's not the easiest thing to do in the world, but I think down the road here in the next week or two, that'll be something that I'm doing. Uh, because when you turn all these on at one time, it's, it's a shock. And when we have a garage door open at night, um, we're lighting up the street and the cars out in the street. So I'm, I'm not sh exactly sure how my neighbors are gonna like this. Um, so that's, that's definitely something that I would do is possibly wire it up to two, two different switches. Another thing that I'm having a problem with right now that I didn't see coming was the interference that these are causing with my garage door opener. Um, I can open my garage door just fine from the hard wire unit uh, on, my, on my wall over here, but anytime I try to use the programmed wireless ones in the cars while the lights are on, it doesn't work. So that's kind of, a, kind of an issue that I need to work out or need to figure out. Um, if you guys have any answers for that, please leave them in the comments below because I'm doing research on that right now. I'm trying to figure out uh, what the heck I can do. I really think these lights are probably some of the best value that you're going to get. They are on the cheaper side. They do feel a little bit cheap, not going to lie. Uh, but for the amount of light that you get out of them and then for the cost of what they are, I don't know if there's a better option. I definitely like the 5000 Kelvin color. Uh, in my previous garage, I had 6,000 or 6,500, I can't remember, uh, Kelvin lights, and they were really nice. They made the cars look really good. The only problem was they were a little bit harsh. So after you were in that light for a good period of time, it was kind of taxing on the eyes. This isn't taxing on the eyes so much because of the color. It's still a, a really bright white. Uh, this might be taxing on the eyes because of the amount of light in here. But it's really not that bad. It's, it's nice. I, I like this amount of light. Um, so overall, I'm pretty happy with this project. I definitely am now excited, more excited to do some projects out in the garage because I can actually see what I'm doing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, hope you guys hit the subscribe button so that you can see some of these, these projects that I have planned that I'm definitely going to be doing out here, indoors, and everywhere else. If you have any questions or comments for me, please leave them down in the comments. I'd love to answer your questions or any, anything that you have for me. Um, but other than that, we'll see you in the next one.